Welcome to the Philippines part 6. I want to get married. The first thing I want to say in this is make sure you actually want to get married. And that the person that you're in a relationship with um, is the person you want to stay with. A lot of the relationships fall apart in the Philippines because the guy starts playing around a few months later because he's moved away from being with the one person and revolving their entire world around that person to I've got to go and get the shopping and the day-to-day life of living in the Philippines. And you start to find that you're attracted um, and approach, uh, sorry, you're approached by a lot more women that may be suitable in many ways. Um, it's not a negative thing, but if you've got married, you may now have found somebody that you would have preferred to be with. I I know some people have come across people six months down the line that were a better match, um, purely because of the relationship that develops rather than an immediate attraction to each other. You know, they have got more in common with somebody they know um, than they may have with their wives. And this is why... You have to have to look at the realities of the relationship. Is it actually giving you what you want out of life? And also your partner. Is it sexually based? Because if it is, it's not going to last. Because it's superficial for you, but it's also super, superficial for your partner. Um, it, it becomes monetary more than anything else. So it's not really what I would call a marriage. And there is no law that says you must get married. You need to take your time, take your foot off the pedal a bit, become more familiar with your surroundings and making sure you're a good match um, so that you really are happy together. The other thing is, getting married is not straightforward. It's just finding the local priest and going, oh, marry us. Um, Things like the cinema, which basically confirms that your partner's not married, has to be done. Um, In the UK, we also have another document that says that the guy has not been legally married elsewhere as well. There is other documentation that sets out a process. So look for that online, because... The reason I am not going to talk about it in this audiobook is things change. But there is a long list of things and and requirements that you'll need to do. If you want to get married in the church, what do you do if you're not a Catholic? You need to write a nice letter to somebody seeing you in the church to allow you to marry in the church and ask for their blessing to do so. You can't simply just book the church and turn up. It just won't happen because you're not a Catholic. There's a lot of things in the background that a lot of people don't assume exists. They just assume, oh, I want to get married. When can we book in, go down to the church, and that's it. It's, it's never that simple. You've also got to look at the fact, does all the documentation exist? You know, things like birth certificates, if required, does your wife have one? Because sometimes... A lot of documentation doesn't exist. Um, there was a case in the Philippines, where, well, in Cebu, I think it's actually generally through the Philippines. They were stopping um, the, what do they call it, when they, they bring the kids into the church, um, the baptism. Um, they basically turned around and said that you couldn't have a baptism for your children unless they had a birth certificate, because a lot of children... Do not get registered as born in the Philippines because it costs money to register the children. So parents think it's a waste of money, so don't bother. There's a lot of stuff like that that you need to take on board. So planning a trip for going to the Philippines for two weeks, including meeting the right person, getting married and everything else, you'll be lucky. Many have tried and failed ahead of you. Also, what's your future plans? Move to the Philippines or go back to the West? If you're looking at going back to the West, have a look at the visa requirements. It's not the first time I've had friends that have 
thought they could go to the Philippines, get married and take their partner on the flight at the end of the month to then sit for six months to a year while everything goes through the process of visas. There is a lot to marriage. There's a lot of paperwork to marriage. How much does a marriage cost? It depends on you. The cheapest wedding reception I've been to, uh, have been to involved using metal trays similar to that of a prison um, for a, an eatery. Um, my own, we, we spent around, I think it was about 80,000 pesos, which is just over a thousand pounds on the reception. Uh, that was full catering um, and the hall, etc. And they dealt with the cake and other bits and pieces. But we still had the cost of obviously the church side of things because they do like donations and other bits and pieces. Um, I think the transportation was in that 80,000 as well. But if you look at the hotels and resorts, a lot of them have packages available that will help you get everything done in one hit. Um, they take the complications out of things because obviously they supply, can organize the vehicles, they can organize um, the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the invites, etc., the cake, the decorations, the cookery, cooking, and pretty much everything required for a wedding, even down to the wedding rings, I suppose. But we bought our bought our own um, separately. But there is wedding planners out there, and they do take a lot of the hassles out of getting everything done and processed. Because while you're busy getting yourself ready, they're dealing with all the ins and outs of the headaches of logistics and getting everybody where they need to be at the right time, while you can just plan on actually enjoying the day. Another reason you need to think about marriage in the Philippines is there's no divorce in the Philippines. So this is why if you're committing to marriage, it should be a lifelong commitment and well thought out and gathering enough knowledge and information to make sure you're making the right decision for both of you. I know some people that have got married have no idea how they could finance being in the Philippines. So they're sort of relying on one month a year or their holiday times from work. Because uh, financially they can't be together. Those sort of relationships um, can be extremely difficult for all people concerned. Will your partner lose interest if you won't get married? I don't think so, because the thing is, marriage is a commitment. Taking a bit more time would actually say that you're taking it seriously. You're looking to make sure that you're right for each other. You're serious about the relationship, but it doesn't have to be done overnight. So I would say don't rush into anything. Uh, just take your time. What about if your partner is looking at other people as well? Well, think about it yourself. Have they missed the point of your relationship? The, the fact is they've got a list of people they're looking at. They, you're either in a relationship or not. The marriage certificate should be something that comes later after a relationship's built. It shouldn't be the initial, all right, we met, met at the airport. What it should be is something that you take as the base, but after you've already confirmed that this is where you want to be and who you want to be with. This is part six of Welcome to the Philippines. Thanks for listening.